G'day guys, Nolsey here, and today I'm going to give you a rundown of my 1997 model Toyota Prado. Just a quick introduction to the vehicle guys, it's a 1997 model Toyota Land Cruiser Prado. Um, this one's got a 3.4 litre V6 with 242,000 k's on it. Um, it's got a 4 speed automatic transmission and it is the VX Grand Day trim package. So here we are under the bottom of the car guys, we've got our uh, 5VZFE 3.4 litre V6 motor. These 5VZ motors are well renowned for being a super reliable Toyota motor. Um, the only thing that people complained about with them is they're usually their fuel economy. Um, in this I get about 16.4 litres of the 100 combined driving, um, which is pretty bad in today's age, especially with prices of fuel now. Um, at where I'm living it's currently $1.98 a litre for, uh, for 91 octane. Um, the only thing that I've had to replace them in the engine bay so far, for reliability reasons, was um, a radiator. The radiator had failed, uh, mostly because it was old and cheap looking. I just went out and got another replacement unit. Now, mine's not particularly expensive, it's not a Toyota Genuine. Um, but it is, a, uh, it is better than what was in it. Now, the thing I'd like to do to the engine bay here, obviously, is remove the LPG system. Because, as typical, um, on older LPG installs, it's failed. Um, so uh, this system will end up making its way out of the car and I'll remove the LPG tank that's in the rear to replace with a long range fuel tank from four wheel drive systems. Here on the driver's side of the roof cage guys we've got a set of max tracks mounted on a custom mounted bracket we have. Uh, we made this one up out of aluminium and some awning mounts. Uh, along with the standard Max Trax mounting pins. Now, there's currently only two on there, but we can fit up to four if we need to later on down the track. Um, but two is a good starting point for now, um, along with a padlock just to keep them safe so that no one nicks them. Here we are at the passenger side of the car, guys. We've got a full 270 degree XTM awning. Um, it'll outstretch the whole way around to the back of the car. Um, and I've also got awning walls to be able to turn that whole awning section into a large tent if the wind gets too heavy. At the top of the vehicle guys, we've got an Adventure King's roof cage with our XDM awning and our Max Trax mounted to it. Um, along with obviously our uh, large 160 watt Ridge Rider solar panel. The Ridge Rider solar panel so far has done exceptionally well with the task I needed to do, which is just charging a battery and running a fridge. Um, but I do see it to be a bit large for this application. I think uh, probably the 110 watt would have done me okay. The drawback of having such a large solar panel on the rooftop here, guys, is that uh, I've now run out of space for things like my swag and my extra fuel storage or anything like that. So I think I can still fit the swag here next to the solar panel, but it does really limit the space of what I can fit. So when you're deciding to go for a solar panel to put on the roof of your car, keep in mind the amount of space you're going to lose depending on how big the solar panel is that you're going to fit. Alright guys, so here we are at the back of the vehicle now. We've got a uh, decent amount of space in the boot here for an 80 litre fridge and a secondary battery. Um, I've got a 102 amp hour AGM battery from XTM that needs to go into the back in a hardcore battery box with some cigarette sockets, some USBs and stuff like that. Um, in the back here I've actually already got a setup for the solar panel. The solar panel actually has its cable and come down through into this grommet here and then through into the uh, boot uh, into a Ridge Rider branded MPPT solar regulator. Um, what I use to charge my battery is this cable that I actually made out of some stuff that I got from Super Cheap Auto. Um, basically what happens is this red plug here will plug into this red port over there. Um, and what that does is, is that means that this plug here will then plug into the battery and what it does is, is it charges from the solar panel. Um, over in the corner over there I've actually got the dual battery kit uh, from Hardcore that's set up so that I can plug it into my battery box with a voltage sensitive relay. Um, what it'll do then is that'll mean I'm able to charge off to either the alternator or the solar panel. So no matter what, no matter where, as long as I'm parked in the sun, I'll be getting charged. Um, when I'm driving, I'll be getting charged. I'll be doing all of that. Um, so that that way I can power my 80 litre ARB fridge. Um, the fridge I plan on parking at the very, very back near that folded up seat. I'll probably end up removing the seat at some point, but you know, folded up seat for now does wonders. Um, the fridge fits basically perfectly in between those two bits of plastic. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to set up a set of second drawers and maybe a rollout kitchen. But let me know in the comments how you would lay it out, what you would put where, what you would need to do. Would you upgrade to DC DC in my case? What would you do? Um, but for now, so far, it's just set up as just a simple boot. Um, it's got a little bit of stuff floating around, like it's got my uh, winch cable in here as well. So this one here is for my run for winch. Um, 
that's so that I can have a cable instead of the remote. Um, it's got an LED light upgrade in the rear here and in the center you can see over there as well. Um, so that way I've got more uh, lighting when they, obviously it's a dark and lightsy stuff. And then I've got stuff like my instruction manuals for my MPBT charger, my run for winch, and I've got my spare wheel brace here too. But yeah, no, it's a um, pretty simple, obviously not much going on here right now, but in the future, hopefully it'll change. Alrighty. So, here we are in the driver's seat guys and in here we've got a few select mods that I think are essential to every four wheel drive in this day and age. Um, we've got first a dash cam. Now this dash cam wasn't a stupidly expensive one, it was actually free with my Telstra points through Telstra Plus. Um, it's a Sprout brand one, I could not tell you the model since it's so generic. Um, it takes a 32 gig SD card and it records 720p at 30 fps so it's okay, microphone in it sucks. Um, but uh, the big pain that I have about it is obviously being corded. You just got this big ugly cord hanging from the top here down to there. Now the thing I really love about the interior at the moment is um, the TX3100 value pack uh, UHF. UHF, if you own a four wheel drive, you should definitely invest in one after you've done your normal maintenance and your usual mods that can get you different places. Um, the amount, of, uh, the amount of times I've used my UHF, even outside of four-wheel driving, just as like, you know, to talk to people on the road has been absolutely sensational. It's definitely the best money I've ever spent. Um, I think this unit totaled out to about $289, so it might have been on sale, but you know, just under 300 bucks, well worth every dollar that you spend on it. Um, other than that, we've got some seat covers from Caterpillar to uh, just, I don't know, protect the leather seats a bit better. I do like the Caterpillar brand. I think it's, I don't know, I just have this sort of like nostalgia for it a little bit. Um, uh, and beyond that, we've got like your normal sort of fixtures you find in a car, like you've got your uh, double USB chargers and stuff like that. Um, the other thing that I've upgraded in the car, obviously, is the stereo, as the factory stereo wasn't Bluetooth, doesn't have hands-free audio, nothing like that. Um, it is basically just uh, your standard, just tape deck. Uh, and then it's got a six stack of CD under this seat here, but who uses CDs or tapes for that matter? So I've upgraded to a Kenwood unit, it's a double DIN unit, it's the DPX M3200BT. Um, so it's got that, it's also got hands-free audio, there's no CD player in it at all anymore, so there's no, you know, no need for it, I just use Spotify audio. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the fact that it's got a Bluetooth uh, hands-free with a microphone mounted to the top of this center console here, um, is really, uh, really super helpful when driving in the city. So um, yeah, obviously it's an automatic transmission with a uh, high-low range gear select, I've just got my cup holder, my uh, you know, stubby holder just on that there. Um, but other than that, yeah, not really a lot to talk about. I've got some rubber floor mats that I got from Super Cheap Auto that were relatively cheap. I think they were about 40, 50 bucks. I don't know what brand they are, unfortunately. I think they're just some no-name brand sort of thing. Um, but yeah, not really a lot to talk about in the uh, interior of the vehicle. Um, the only light I haven't upgraded with the LED light upgrade is this uh, map light here. Um, the map light, I don't know, I can't find a bulb for it. I might have be able to find one on eBay, but I just haven't bothered as of yet. Um, and the only thing that I really sort of use but don't use is the sunroof. Um, the sunroof is handy, uh, mostly so you can have a check to see if the stuff hasn't fallen off the roof. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, yeah, it's just another feature that the car has that I sort of do and don't use, I guess. So, but yeah, there's not much more to talk about the uh, about the interior at the front here. Um, there's a switch here that does basically nothing. Um, it was meant to be an isolator switch for our winch, but turns out the ground cable we used off of our winch solenoid isn't a necessary ground because it grounds itself out. Um, but that will have a few chill use later on if you're wondering what this is for. Um, basically, it's just there for nothing. It's also got a few other switches here and there, like it's got your IPF switch for the uh, Iron Man uh, spotlights on the front, which we'll go through later. Um, and it's got a uh, switch here for all the Iron Man fog lights, so it's got all that set up, that's all ready to go. Um, but yeah, no, beyond that, not really much to talk about in the, uh, in the interior of the car. Um, other than that, yeah, it's just pretty standard. For bar work, guys, we've got fitted a set of uh, Aussie 4x4 uh, universal side steps and side rails. Um, these ones are to suit a wagon. Um, we actually had to cut this section of the brush bar here to be able to suit my Iron Man Deluxe Bull Bar. These ones here were a bit of a, uh, a bit of a pain to fit, mostly because like everything you see uh, on eBay or any other store like that, you'll get uh, universal fit ones that very rarely fit without some form of massaging. Um, these ones are actually a bit of a pain due to the fact of this being a higher spec product uh, with dual fuel tanks. It actually was harder to fit on that side than it was on this. 
Um, this side went on relatively easily uh, compared to the other side, but the other side, absolute pain, mostly because of clearance issues regarding the sub tank. All right guys, so here we are at the front of the vehicle. Now we've got uh, probably the most work that we've done to the car has been done here actually. Um, the big one was obviously the bull bar. The bull bar is a Iron Man premium deluxe bull bar with uh, the LED indicators and fog lamps. Um, it's also got uh, a set of Iron Man 4x4 spotlights fitted to it as well. Um, these ones throw a lot of light at a good range, which I really enjoy. So I think they're a really quality bit of gear. Um, inside the winch cradle of the bull bar, you've noticed we've got a Runva 11 XP premium winch, um, which comes with the wireless remote and corded remote. Um, it's got a winch rope instead of a rope cable, which is pretty good. Um, it uses a block and a bow shackle design rather than a hook design. Along with that, we've also got fitted on the bull bar a GME 6.6 dB aerial, which can as part of our value pack. Um, not much to say really about this aerial at all. Um, it's pretty well it does the job, I guess, is sort of the uh, sort of the attitude I have about it. But um, you know, it came with the kit, so that's the one we threw on. On top of that, we've also got a black plastic Prado weather shield for the wolf, for the bonnet. Uh, the bonnet protector being in black really, really finishes off the look of the front of the vehicle. I think um, the clear plastic one was okay and it did this job, but to really make it look at my own, I went with the black plastic one. Okay guys, so at the bottom of the car here, we've got actually fitted a brown Davis bash plate. Now this bash plate goes just about past the transfer case and it's on the other side of the car, which isn't ideal. I mean, you'd like to go for all the way, but I mean, this much, much better than the factory bash plate that only covered the sump. Um, so this covers the front diff and the sump along with some other inter components there. Um, and I think it's a really solid bit of gear, so definitely worth the investment on that. I think it was about 600 bucks or so delivered. Um, along with that, we've also got fitted some red uh, recovery points here. Recovery points are obviously an essential part of the vehicle, as if you do get stuck in any situation, you want to be able to be towed out. So you utilize the both of those in one go to pull a uh, car out that's super stuck. All right, guys, so here we are at the rear of the vehicle, and so far we've only got a few select mods that have been done, um, including a set of Caterpillar mud flap, uh, as replacements to the factory ones because the factory ones one was broken. Um, we've got an XTM 4.7 ton tow hitch fitted where the Heyman Reese tow ball used to be. Um, and we've got ourselves an XTM uh, disposal bag. Now, disposal bags I deem to be pretty essential, especially if you do a lot of camping in places like Fraser Island, as a lot of the time you don't get disposal locations at your campsites. You have to hang on to your rubbish in dispose of it correctly as you can, either by taking it off the island or finding a disposal location on the island. But yeah, we have plans for maybe a rear bar in the, in the future, mostly for extra fuel capacity storage, but probably just a better mounting space for the spare tire, as the factory mounting space for the spare tire, while works for a factory tire, is not good for any sort of, you know, large mud terrain or all-terrain tire. So you definitely want to consider the idea of that, if that is something you choose to do. So guys, these are the tyres that I have fitted to the car. I've got a set of Roadstone Rodian MTs. Uh, they are a 265 by 75 R16 for the factory VX Grand A rims. These come out to a 32 inch tyre and so far, after 15,000 Ks, I think these ones have done really well and make some really good value for money. So here's a top tip for buying four wheel drive tyres guys. Step one, find the correct tyre size for your vehicle. Whether it be 32s, 33s, or 37 inch tyres for your chopped XJ Cherokee. Step two, walk into your local tyre power. Step three, walk up to the clerk and ask him, what is your cheapest muddies? All right, the last thing I mentioned here about the car today, guys, is obviously its suspension lift. Now, it's obviously uh, much taller than a standard Prado is of this year. Um, it's actually had a two inch Dobbinson suspension lift fitted. There were a, it wasn't an expensive kit, um, about $890, and just shy of $900, I think it was, for the kit. Um, it's got a one, plus 150 spring in the front and plus 300 spring in the rear. I went with a plus 300 springs in the rear because I plan on drawing a lot of stuff in the back along with a lighter fuel tank, so a bigger fuel capacity. Eventually, it'll probably have a 155 litre main tank, so it'll have, you know, there's an extra 150 kilograms of fuel. So keep that in mind when you're purchasing your suspension to accommodate for the mods you plan on doing in the future as well. So guys, thanks for watching the rundown of the car today. We've obviously got a lot of things we need to do to it still, like it needs a rear set of drawers, a rear kitchen set up. Um, 155 litre main tank would be a great one to get rid of the LPG and have two fuel tanks again. That'd be wonderful to get some extra range. Um, we're getting this ready for Fraser Island 2022 trip, so stay tuned for that for sure. Um, and in the comments, what you should do is leave a comment saying what you would do to this. What would your next mod be? Um, I look forward to reading them. 
and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for checking out our video today, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out our Fraser Island 2021 adventure as well. Um, this year we're gonna be heading to Fraser Island in October of 2022, so we'll see you there.